So this next video is um, going to go over um, laying down the feathers and I'm going to use um, some of these green wing um, dark red feathers. As you see I'm filling in the blanks here um, as I have my pattern over here. So kind of going down here. I'd fill in red here, here, also in these areas. Later on I'll use start using it here. That's pencil there. Which will, the feathers will go over that. So as you notice here I already have some that are pre-cut. Like I said, you want to cut your feathers down. You don't want to use big feathers like that and start going big just to save time. I mean you could but um, if you look at a lot of the old examples it was um, more finer feather work that was done towards um, any examples that I know of that were found. So here we go. Um, for instance you see these different sized feathers still you want to cut them down. For instance this when you cut it down even a lot more. So I hold it from here. Kind of snip it. Really get rid of this stuff. It's not good for you to be breathing that stuff in. See that? We could always take a little bit of that off if I need to, laying those down. That might even be a little big. <clears throat> There's another size feather. Green wing. Macaw. <coughs> oh, a smaller feather. Can fit in the little spaces. Here's another part of a different area of the feather. Notice I don't have to cut off as much, but still. Um, this piece I'm working on is not one where I'm using whole pieces of the feather like that, even though they're kind of small. So that stuff, I want to put in a pile and get rid of that. Put it in a plastic bag and throw it away. Don't let these little kind of fibers get around. And lastly, this little one. I want to cut that off too. Glue. Let me see if I can get a little bit more of a close up here. Let me do one of these. As you can see, the nap of the brain tan. <clears throat> it's kind of left up and the glue really nicely goes into that pretty well. So notice here out of each batch of feathers you hopefully get you'll find you'll have different size feathers and look on this side. Every now and then find like a little teeny tiny feather 
It'll go nice in a little corner like that, so I'm going to use that one first. And then go from there, lay them down. Just a tiny little dab. I'll do. Once you get just a tiny little dab, especially for, for this small of a feather. You want to try to aim it. And here what I'm using is a skewer. So I'm going to scoot it back. one of the smaller feathers that I have here start filling it in again just with a tiny little dab like that. So notice the direction I'm laying down the feathers. Um, you can't see it right now but my design um, from the head pointing down to the ground um, the feathers are falling down this way so whatever design you do you always want to try to go with the gravity so if even if you, have, if you have something curved it's okay to curve it a little bit at an angle but um, usually if you notice birds pelts um, they kind of fall back with the gravity or kind of down backwards so. There's a bigger feather. I'm gonna cut that back a little bit. Just a dab. If you put too much, see like on that yellow. I think I was even using a di different glue, but put too much too, and you can start seeing the glue. So I'm trying to lay that down as neatly as possible. Can I, then I can use a skewer and hold it down for just a couple seconds so I know the fibers of that brain tan and the glue and the feather made that bond. See how it just, I don't know if you can tell, but it's just got hold. Uh, I had to kind of press it down a couple times. Important to check and do that. Okay. 
है so I'm putting glue on the back of where the feather would usually show on the bird then I'm turning it over to the way in which the bird would wear it on a natural color so no, notice how here I'm not trying to cheat too much I'm kind of aiming these feathers closely together um, birds pelts the feathers are very close together and if you try to cheat and space them too far apart it's not going to look too good so it's always best to bunch them together nicely once there's a little bit of glue there you can kind of use that um, skewer to kind of pick up feathers like that every once in a while. So I'm going to lay this one down there. Okay, it's going to kind of be my guide and I kind of want to estimate right about where I'm going to need it. Here I can go back a little bit, right? So pressure on it, making sure it doesn't stick to my sticks. It can be a little bit sticky. So here, notice how my little strategy here is I'm going to lay a feather on the opposite side of where I just did. and then one in the middle of that. So I'm kind of aiming it on the opposite side. a little bit further up and then again holding it there for just a few seconds The thing I like about this particular glue is the gel glue and that brand is that it gives me just enough working time for me to adjust it in place, hold it down. Some of the type of super glue takes so long for it to bond, it doesn't bond. Um, to me this one's just right. And when it dries, it dries nicely into the fibers of the brain tan any other material you use I don't know what else I'd recommend but um, it, it bonds right into the okay. so now I'm going to put one in the middle of the two where I place and I can place it a little bit further up trying to advance a little bit here okay. 
So one of the challenges, of course, in doing a, such a big featherwork project like this is um, gathering feathers. Like I said, I get mine on eBay, but it's important that um, you do as much as you can to plan ahead for your type of project. What colors do you want on your design? Um, are the feathers available and the colors that you need them? Um, my recommendation is that you always go with, um, if you can, always go with feathers that are native to um, the birds that were um, of that work that was done. That's why I'm trying to do more macaw feathers. Um, but sometimes if you can't, um, try to use feathers that at least are um, natural colored. Um, I'm not sure if I'd recommend using kind of dyed feathers. Um, maybe in certain colors in certain areas for some type of work, but um, part of using the brain tan, or, you know, the species of birds of that work is trying to keep it again as, as traditional um, and as authentic as possible to that um, to, to that era. Here I'm going the opposite end. Here I'm going to start, I'm going to need to start cutting down my feathers in size. So I'm ending the section. And the last one should be kind of short. So. Now this is pretty simple here, um, the solid colors, so this is a solid color area and I'm just filling it in. There you can kind of see how well the glue bonded to that brain tan, it kind of wanted to stay there. So once you have that good bond with the feather there and the brain tan, some of the shields I've done. Um, it's the way to go. The one I did for the research actually was sewn. I didn't use any glue. Each feather was sewn by thread again to try to keep it as authentic as possible. Um, and it was a lot of work, and in my opinion, um, I kind of like the way the glue kind of lays down on the brain tan anyways, a little bit better. Um, it's believed that there were two methods, one of sewing them down and another one of fusing, I think, um, turtle dung, I, I, I suppose, as a type of ingredient for the glue. Um, but. Uh, I found that that type of glue that I showed you there is the way to go. So, add one more here. It's larger in size.
so kind of the most challenging part of each little segment is it's closing it off here. So here I'm trying to aim it right at the corner. Have it cover that area. So the more neatly and nicely you can get to fall in there in place and know that you have a good bond. That's the idea there. Now that right there is kind of going at an average pace of kind of feather size. Um, I'd say ideally you want to use about that size. Um, you can use of course feathers that are smaller. Um, once you start using feathers that are bigger, in my opinion, kind of the work doesn't look um, as good. So, and of course, I'd fill in that one. Right, and those two. So here, like on the other side, you notice. Here's the green wing, scarlet, two colors, orange and then a yellow of conure, and then a parrot, iridescent parrot feather, and I believe a darker macaw feather there. Same effect here, but no beads in between them. This was kind of my safety thing, just to kind of make sure this was going to work out. And like I mentioned, this is my background color with green highlights. So pretty much, instead of having one solid kind of uh, white or, or red background, my background is going to kind of be that fiery orange red, um, light orange, yellow, um, and then with some green geometrics plan to use for this regalia. So I'm hoping to share this um, for people to begin to um, hopefully um, dress um, for you know ceremony or dance or if they do presentations and represent the culture it's good to dress in a good um, in the authentic way as possible representing the culture so uh, look out for some more videos on this topic and um, if you have any questions um, about doing this a little bit more feel free to let me know and I can more than help um, more than happy to help you because I want to see more people um, dressed up um, in the nicest way as possible. Well, last couple of things from here, what I would do is I would, as you see, I've done here, I've cut this outline, cut it out, cut it out, and probably even I'm thinking I'm going to take this with me on my travels and do edge work all the way around and probably a smaller bead, size 13 gold charlottes. Another thing about these beads, um, I would recommend um, using 24 karat gold plated um, seed beads. These are size 11 from um, General Bead in San Francisco. Um, I'm close enough where I can drive up there, but they have an online order where um, you can order them. But on the edge, I would use a smaller bead, which is a 13 cut 
also 24 karat gold plated pay a little bit more but the effect I'm trying to do is try to imitate that hammered gold that they would use around the feather work that they did back in the um, time, times before the Spanish um, uh, came and invaded the, um, the city of Tenochtitlan so um, hopefully um, that was helpful if any part of it or any variation I know it's kind of a big project like that to do with the whole regalia but um, I think that it's well worth it especially when um, people can appreciate when you go out there and represent you know the people in, in a good way like that